easy way to make money. Ready, ready, man, always ready. A slap on the wrist is nothing, man. We still need some tools, bro. For me, it's at the lower end of the, the, the things that aren't there, you know? It's not about enjoying it, it's about it's how reward to risk ratio is low with, with brand theft. How long have you been stealing tools for? A few years, you know. When you're doing this kind of thing, do you ever think of whose van it is? Do you ever think of the consequences that's going to be on them? No. Tool theft isn't anything new in our industry. It's something that has been crippling us countrywide. Unfortunately, for many of us, we haven't just been an unlucky victim once. For some, it's twice, five times, some even more. It's costly, it's gut-wrenching, and nothing seems to be getting done. Shockingly, only a small few get their own tools back into their own hands. We're here today to meet an individual who's involved in organised crime and tool theft. And we're going to see what he does and why he does it. Charlie, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, bro. Thanks for meeting us today. You know what this is about. We're here to talk about van theft, stealing tools. How long have you been stealing tools for? A few years, you know, like on and off. A, a alongside some other things as well. And what's the motivation behind it? Do you, you know, do you enjoy it? Is it... It's not about enjoying it, it's about it's how reward to risk ratio is low with, with van theft. So it's like, get me, it's, it's an easy way to make money. And while, it's, while you're doing it, just before you go into the van, just before you steal those tools, do you ever think, I'm going to get caught? Obviously, police is, a, is the, biggest, the biggest sort of threat, I'd have said. Yeah. Does, that, does that sort of worry you? It doesn't, you know. Not with van theft, because even if you get caught, it's a slap on the wrist, bro. Like, in comparison to other stuff, it's not like we're, like, killing anyone or we're stealing some tools, bro. It's like, for me, it's at the lower end of the, the, the things that are out there, you know? And do you work? You've, you, you, obviously, you've just said that you do other things. Do, do you work? Do you have a day-to-day -day job? Uh, not a conventional day-to-day -day government paying job, no. When you're doing this kind of thing, do you ever think of whose van it is? Do you ever think of the consequences that's going to be on them? No, I don't think. I don't no. think about that, no. And have you ever been caught? Is it something that you've, you know, are you halfway through and you've had, a, had to leg it? Or have you yeah. been, you know, have you been caught by the owner or by the police or? Um, never by the police, by the owner. Um, but when we do it, we roll like three to four man deep, so. It doesn't only work out for the person that's catching us. And is it is it something you go with tooled up? Are you are you ready? Yeah, ready, ready, man. Always ready. When you've got a group of us, there's someone that's on the couch. It's an intimidation factor, and it's more muscle to to get into the van for the ones that are locked. Yeah. You know. Do you go for something more than over something else? Yeah. So whatever is just the most valuable because they're easy to sell, man. You can sell them in the gym, the barber shop, um, car boot, anywhere. Like moving tools is easy. So anyone will buy it? Yeah, even other tradesmen. Like I was just going to say that, have other tradesmen. Yeah, definitely, often. definitely. It makes sense as well. If I was a tradesman, I wouldn't want to buy a brand new thing when I can just get one from someone around the corner that's selling it for half the price. So manufacturers go to a certain length to stop, you know, to put security on the vans, etc., to stop all this. But now that there's extra security, does that sort of deter you? Do you see a van and go, you know, if it's got the small deadlocks, the big deadlocks, the padlocks, whatever on it, does that deter you at all? Um, for us, like me and my people, not so much with the padlock stuff. With the cage, then that, that, that could put us off because it's just a, it's a lot of hassle. And that's happened? If it's taking too long and it's a bait area and we're being loud and people are walking past in the night and stuff, it's just like, no, nah, let's just move to an easier one. And do you, are you still actively doing this kind of work or have you given it up or...? Yeah, we, I'll still do it when it comes about. I'm an opportunist man, so... And obviously you're doing this to feed yourself, your family, I don't know, what, what, whatever you have in your household. I suppose like the tradesmen's going out to work to feed their family. You have the one-man bands. Okay, you have the bigger companies. It's still not right, but the one-man bands that you have, do you ever think this man's got a family, he's on his own, he might struggle, or does that never cross your mind? Don't cross my mind. No? No. The thing like, I've been in the wrong field if that crossed my mind, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you think tradesmen could do to stop people like you and your team, as you say, as your yeah. people? How, how could they stop this happening? Proper like, punishment, see what I'm saying? Like, a slap on the wrist is nothing, man. If you get caught with a strap, you get X amount of years. Per bullet, you get X amount of years. If you get violence, X amount of years. We've opened a van, like, 
Okay. Following our conversation with Charlie as we know him, it's easy work, easy to break in with little consequence. So what are we going to do? Are we going to push the police more? Are we going to up our van security? On the tools have teamed up with a small business insurer, Simply Business, to stamp out tool theft. So let us know in the comments below, let us know what you do.